High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. We're live in Nassau County for a power conference showdown out of Class CD, the Cold Spring Harbor Seahawks take on the Class A Port Washington Vikings on the Varsity Media Sports Network. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. Cold Spring Harbor comes into this game at 4-2 and two on the year. Rob, it's the hardest part of their schedule, but they're cooking right now. Four straight victories for the Seahawks. Working in a power conference and now in the toughest part of their schedule. But like you said, John, coming off some big wins, defeating Plain Edge, shutting them out 7 nothing today. Port Washington, another test. A young Port Washington, but the meat of the schedule now for Cold Spring Harbor. Yeah, and don't let the low classification for you for Cold Spring Harbor. They're the two-time defending New York State champions. As you see right there, 4-2 and two on the year, and they're going to be led by two of the best players in their class as well. It's going to be Alex Bauer and Timmy Pisano. If you take a look at it, Bauer there, a dynamic force. Five goals on the season, two assists, and he is a Michigan commit. He's moving on to big things. Tommy Piz Timmy Pisano, not committed to college yet. Five uh Sorry, 11 checks on the season. He's been playing fantastic back there for them. And look for both of these guys to have an impact on this game. Yeah, the five cause turnovers is a big uh, piece there. So those that's Bauer and Pisano. Let's meet the rest of the Seahawks who are looking for their fifth win of the year as they'll have their starting 11 of Kevin Burns, Roy Testa, Andrew Mazzi, along with Alex Bauer, Ryan McGloin, Sammy Bruno, Cole Newman, Timmy Pisano, Hunter Ulico, Jimmy Howell, and Annette is... James Grigo, and Grigo, boy, he's been something else this year, saving 54% of the shots is Grigo in net, the goalie for Cold Spring Harbor. And Grigo, big body back there. He's a senior football player, backup goalie last year, but has improved so much in his clearing game and blocking that net that he's earned the starting job this year for Cold Spring Harbor. Meanwhile, on the other side, Port Washington, four straight losses to begin the year, but they picked up a 7-6 victory over Massapequa, and they're going to be led by the Braunschweiger Twins today. And this is a young, dynamic team. They're looking to get their offense going, and as you see up there, the Braunschweigers combined eight goals and an assist. Those two can get the ball moving up and down the field. Port Washington Vikings relying on them heavily. Six points combined for those two in the win over Massapequa. So those are the Braunschweigers. Let's meet the rest of the Vikings in their starting 11. Led by Isaac Neal in his eighth season. Will Amity, Harry Ainone, along with Ben Christopher Rados, Brendan Lang, Stephen Joe Braunschweiger, Harry Behan, Gavin Neville, Nick Noga, Griffin Marvin, who's been a fantastic face-off guy this year, and Max Ainone, the goalie for Port Washington. And Ainone, he's a young player, but uh, he is nails between the pipes. Yeah, Ainone coming into this program young. 13-year-old freshman, and again, what a fantastic opportunity for a young man like this to take the reins in the cage for this Viking team. It's the Viking, it's the Seahawks. It's all coming up next on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Dante! 
does it again! Defensive play. Dante Madaro. Delico! Ties it up! By Diazzo! steps up and scores! A jump shot, Fennell! Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. Welcome you back to Port Washington. There is the road team and Dennis Bond leading the way. And, and when you think of uh, coaching greatness, look no further than Dennis Bond. 25th season, Sawanica alum, back-to-back -back New York State champions. He has built a powerhouse in one of the smallest schools in Nassau County. Yeah, Dennis Bond. Like I said, Sawanica, that's my... Home turf over there, Class of 84. He does bring that veteran leadership here and a calmness. His team respects everything he says on and off the field. Great leadership there for this Cold Spring Harbor Seahawks team. 14 league championships, six LICs, and six New York State champions. So that's Cold Spring Harbor and Isaac Neal now in his eighth season for Port Washington. It's a team that went 12-5 and five a year ago, and he said, hey, we're trying to find our identity this year. They've got 17 juniors on the roster. It is a small class that's trying to find its identity, but he feels they've got a ton of talent. Yeah, and Coach Neal, in a situation like this, you're looking to develop your program. You're looking to have some kind of stability when you have a young group come in. Again, a freshman in net. You're just trying to build something that's going to be sustainable for years to come. He's got his hands full with a tough schedule, but this team's starting to pick up steam at the right time. Let's not forget this is a team that won the 2022 Nassau County Championship before falling to Northport, and they were knocking on the door last year as well before losing to Farmingdale in the Class A final. So if Cold Spring Harbor's going to extend their winning streak to five games or Port makes it back-to-back -back wins, Rob, how are they going to get it done today? And if we take a look here at our keys to the game for Cold Spring Harbor, it's to shoot at a higher percentage. Um, they have to limit the mental mistakes on the field, take advantage of the space that they've got in for Port Washington. It's to play with energy, use that youthful energy, make sure that they're able to clear the ball effectively in that transition game, and be more consistent offensively. Make sure that they're able to put it on net and get some into the cage. Yeah, and that was something that Isaac Neal said after the – half hollow hills lost was he wasn't too satisfied with the quality of shots that they were taking he said hey I don't mind that we're taking a lot of shots but they have to be high percentage shots and find the open man and that's something where when you have a team that is uh, as inexperienced as Port Washington is uh, and didn't get a lot of playing time this year you're going to go through those growing pains uh, but he feels that his team um, you know if they just clear the ball effectively and of course move it around offensively they'll be a-okay. And Coach Neal has a system that he's been running for a long time. And when you have a young team, it's a matter of teaching them that system, making them comfortable with one another. And again, like you had said earlier, use the space effectively. Be able to get that ball moving around the perimeter and find the alleys and get it to the net. So for Cold Spring Harbor, a 10-5 win over Horace Greeley. And that's four straight wins. And it all started with their overtime victory over Island Trees. 10-9 and then 7-4 over Plain Edge, 7-0 against Bethpage. Meanwhile, for Port Washington, a good 7-6 victory against a very talented Massapequa crew. Isaac Neal said that he learned a lot about his team and they battled adversity very well. And now they're looking to win two in a row. And this second one would be against the defending state champions. It's Sam Bruno as well as Griffin Marvin in the faceoff. And Marvin had himself a day against the Chiefs. He won 13 of 17 face-offs against Massapequa, a big reason for that 7-6 victory. And the ground ball is finally scooped up by Port Washington, and Ben Christopherados starts it off. Christopherados making a nice turn there, getting it back to the midi. And right now just trying to set things up out of the backfield. Well, and it'll be Steve Braunschweiger to start it off with Brendan Lang. Brendan Lang, two goals against Massapequa. He was fantastic. There's Will Amity, four goals on the season, only one tally 
against Massapequa and a ground ball for Estiferados battling with Hunter Ulico. That's going to be a fun one this year. Ulico, first year starter. He was the fourth defenseman and a good whack at it by Amudi. And a ground ball to be picked up by Cold Spring Harbor. Amudi looking to change directions there and try to dislodge the ball, but picked up nicely and back the other way. Well, it was James Howell with the GB, and this starts off the offense for Cold Spring Harbor and Bruno for Cold Spring Harbor. And that's the thing about the Seahawks that we'll talk about today, Rob, is that Cold Spring Harbor doesn't have a traditional FOGO, so you're going to see a lot of Sam Bruno out there with the long pole and then switch to the shorter stick, and that's exactly what he does on the first possession of the evening for the Seahawks. And we've seen some teams utilize that FOGO, get the guy in there, try to win that face off in. Just get off the field, but when you have a guy that can do everything, you keep him on there as much as possible. Here's Ryan McGloin. He's a Middlebury commit. 1v1, working with the defenseman Jimmy Gannon, only a sophomore. And there's the first stop for Max Inone. He's got 30 saves coming into today. Great job by Inone, too, to clear that thing out quickly and create a fast transition. Will Amity was the backup to Will Meyer last year. Someone who's got a strong shot and... Coaching staff expecting big things from Amity. He's already got seven points through the first five contests this year. And, John, right now both teams playing a pretty conservative game, trying to set things up, feeling each other out. And this is a Cold Spring Harbor team that's not afraid to throw defensive looks out there. Now, they don't have the personnel um, that could go very deep, but they're very wise and have a – Large lacrosse IQ, and of course that's something that's preached over for Cold Spring Harbor year after year. Up top, Steve Braunschweiger rips a shot and bounces it wide to the left, and it'll stay with Port Washington as Harry I known was trailing behind the cage. Braunschweiger doing a nice job there on that bull dodge, trying to get that shot off, but a little high. And once he starts getting those balls on net, we'll see some good things happen here, John. Christopher Rados goes to X. I know loses a good check. Hunter Ulico, or check that, that's James Howell, and Push will keep it with the Vikings. Yeah, just a little too much on that push there, and it's now going to be Amity with the ball, trying to set things up. Amity, 22 points a year ago. As Brendan Lank steps in front and receives it back from Joe Braunschweiger. Lost the handle there, but picked it up, and a little physicality going there. Take a look at those elbows being thrown by Lang. Here's a drive, and the first save of the evening for James Grigo, saving 54% of shots this year. So a little pushing and shoving early on here, and we'll see how that affects the game as they go on. No bad blood between these teams at the moment. Well, and you'd have to imagine, and that's a big reason why Cold Spring Harbor is as good as they are. They want to establish them themselves uh, defensively and a little bit forcefully through the first four minutes of the game. Look at the wheels. Steve Anna. Braunschweiger, the turnaround shot. Kick saved by Grigo, even though it wasn't a distinct kicking motion. The foot keeps it out of the cage. Yeah, Braunschweiger just turning the jets on back there and came out of nowhere, but holding on to that pipe and making the save. Grigo, also a football player, was the backup last year, and he's improved so much in the clearing game. Dennis Bond said, there's nobody that I'm happier for to be the starting goalie than James Grigo. He said he's been putting his body out on the line. He's bruised and battered, but he earned it, and he's happy to have him in that net. And so a long possession for Port Washington comes up empty. And now with eight, over eight minutes to go in the first quarter, Cold Spring Harbor comes the other way, and a long outlet pass up ahead. That's Sam Bruno past the midfield. Bruno over to Gunnar Anderson, had a goal against Horace Greeley. Nine points on the season. Swung behind the cage, this is Andrew Mazzi. Tesla shooting the ball out and around, and again, they're just working that perimeter, taking their time to set up those shots, try to get in the alley. But right now, John, a lot of the, both teams playing it very deep, starting it out wide and not bringing much to the cage. Well, and of course, this being the last year without a shot clock, there's no reason to rush. And Cold Spring Harbor, a team that's not afraid to be patient and try and catch Port Washington napping, and that's exactly what they do. The Seahawks strike first. 
on a pretty curl to the cage as it is Andrew Mazzi scoring his eighth goal of the year. 1-0 Cold Spring Harbor on the road. And a heck of a pass there by Gunnar Anderson to find him in the alley. So Anderson with a beautiful pass. And Mazzi with the goal, and it's 1-0. We'll get another look at it here. Again, Anderson finds Mazzi and a laser up over the left shoulder of Inone. Beautiful pass and play. Great ball control there. Andrew Mazzi, a senior, fourth attackman a year ago, and now they'll usually run him out of the box, but that's something that he's improved on as well, moving with the ball and setting up his own shot as he weaves through a few defenders and can't get the GB as Max Inone, the freshman, and second-year starter for Port Washington, comes out of the cage. Liam McCarville, one of the vocal leaders out of the midfield. Over to Jimmy Gannon, who's in third gear. Harry Inone swings it near side, and now it's Amity as Port Washington looks for the response. And McCarville now making that run, gets it behind the net, and again, they're setting things up as Amity moves into that X position. And so now it's James Howell who draws the defensive assignment. Leads way to Jacob Apat. Bust inside, rips a shot, bounces over the crossbar. And it'll stay with the Vikings. Grigo with good field position there to try to get that stick down and create a tough passing opportunity, I'm um, shooting opportunity there for the Vikings. Amity. And now up top, it's Liam McCarville. Someone who's got captain abilities and captain leadership qualities and is a vocal leader, rallies the guys in practice and someone that the coaching staff really leans on. From X, Amity disrupted. Good defense on the other side, Timmy Pisano, one of our impact players who's really blossoming into that role. Amity showing that footwork, though, as he made a couple of really nice moves there and he was a backup to Will Meyer last year. He's got a strong shot, good footwork, able to move that ball, and you're seeing his athleticism. Yeah, Luke Meyer now over at Richmond, uh, someone who was fantastic last year, north of 40 points and a goal. Busting inside, that's Jacob Apat, and we're tied at one. Apat, one of the big club guys, and they needed him to be a big high school guy, and he is showing up big right there. We'll take another look at this one as he changes... The sight line there and gets that ball down low. And Rob, that's just got to be one of the toughest shots to stop is that five hole, regardless of the sport and James Grigo, uh, not having any luck there. Yeah, just a great job changing planes. I mean, he had that ball up high and then swiped it low, and that is a tough one. The bouncer every time. And again, this is why these goalies get battered and bruised. Nothing protecting those legs. You're all warriors out there. The whistle, and stops play, and now head referee speaking to Dennis Bond. Not sure if he called a timeout or what it is, but now both teams going over to their benches. It doesn't look like a timeout was called. No, so we'll wait for the official announcement here. And so... It should looks, be a timeout. Yeah. yeah, it should be a timeout for Cold Spring Harbor. Yeah, the official pointed that way, and it looks like Cold Spring Harbor's not happy with that. Maybe they accidentally said the words timeout. Who knows? But Well, while we have a moment here for Cold Spring Harbor, let's take a look at the numbers of Cold Spring Harbor, and they've been uh, a really good program, obviously, over the last couple of years. Uh, as Cold Spring Harbor, by the numbers, they just uh, will put it up here. And nothing to bat an eye at. One of the smallest schools, of course, on Long Island. But, I mean, look at the all-time wins. Yeah, uh, 710 all-time wins. And Long Island champions six times. Nassau County, 14. And you can't take anything away from those New York State titles. And you churn out athlete after athlete. John, 35 All-American players, 21 current players in college this is a deep program sending out a bunch of 
high quality lacrosse players. Yeah, and it's not just um, the Division One recruits; they're filling up rosters all over the country. I mean, you look at the Bruno brothers, Ben and Jacob over at Amherst, and Spencer Will also at Amherst, and then you've got C.J. Riley over at Michigan. Uh, Patrick Pisano, which is Timmy's older brother at Yale, he seems to be on the Ivy League honor roll every single week. Just 21 current Cold Spring Harbor alums playing in college. And, John, we've spoken about it. It's a microcosm of this entire Long Island. You know, Long Island has been a hub for lacrosse, churning out player after player into the college community, whether it's D1 through D3. But this island still dominating the lacrosse scene. Someone else who's been dominating, Alex Bauer, wearing number seven for Cold Spring Harbor. As Andrew Mazzi gets it up top to Bauer. Bauer, the future Michigan Wolverine, goes 1v1 and slices inside with Jimmy Rather. Rather the long pole as Bauer defers over to McGloin. Nice job there with the little roll dodge and dishing it off to McGloin. Jimmy Gannon gets the assignment, and now here's McGloin behind the cage. Seven goals, one assist, eight points for the future Middlebury Midfielder. Good whack at it by Nick Noga, someone who's made leaps and bounds strides forwards defensively. Low shot altered. Rebound comes back out and skips wide. And that ricochet shot by Andrew Mazzi, responsible for the lone Cold Spring Harbor goal today. That original shot bounced off the shins of Christian Sarchese. In front, Mazzi, bingo. Two goals for Andrew Mazzi in the first quarter, and Cold Spring Harbor jumps in front. And, John, you can't give Mazzi space like that, or that's what he's going to do. They left him wide open, and from about 15 yards out, puts in a beam over the left shoulder of Inone. And it's 2-1, to one. so back and forth game right now. Scoring opportunities both ways. And we'll see again if poor Washington can increase that shooting percentage, right? We've got to get it on net to try to tie this thing up and try to, again, build up this high energy with this young team. Battle for the faceoff. The clamps are down. But who's got the ball? Still loose. And a good battle up front. And now a whistle taken. And it should be Port Washington possession. Well, one of the keys was winning 40% of the face-offs, and Finn Meyer is really held in there against Sam Bruno. And, you know, when it comes to Griffin Marvin, uh, he went against some of the best face-off guys already at the beginning of the schedule and just continues to weather the storm. So Brunschwager again with that ball. McKean giving him a couple shoves out there. Amity, wide. Good decision there to take that shot. Just missing a little to the right of the net, but poor Washington will maintain control. A swing up top, it's Brendan Lang over to Steve Braunschweiger. Braunschweiger 1v1 with McKean, and McKean pretty aggressive there as the flag is out. Low shot, mom goal, and a whistle stops play, and a penalty coming against Cold Spring Harbor, first EMO. For the Vikings. And most of the physicality so far happening on that offensive side for the Vikings. A pretty aggressive and physical Cold Spring Harbor defense here so far. And it finally caught up to them. And they will play a man down as poor Washington gets control. Looks like it's going to be a holding penalty. Yeah, look like you indicated one minute. Yeah, and... Uh... Now Port Washington with an opportunity to find the equalizer. As Dylan Buckley will play on the EMO units. Harry Inone. And just cycling that ball as Amity cradles and sends it back. And this is where Cold Spring Harbor can really suffocate you on defense and they Really do well in the man down units. Open shot, Amity denied. Grigo with the leg. Heck of a save there by Grigo to kick that out wide. That's a tough one, John. Got, he got beat on one of those earlier, but not the second time. Tommy McCarville comes on, the junior. Three points on the season. Seen as the do-it-all guy for Port Washington. 
Joe Braunschweiger. Working with Cole Newman. Step up Amity. Slings back over and Rex O'Connor, the midi, picks up the assignment. Weaving inside and Grigo on the short hop again. He's Grigo. a brick wall, oh, Rob. A brick wall and just getting it right in the pocket and a quick distribution out. And here's a scoring attempt the other way. And a save by a known. He used his boot to rob Alex Bauer and keep it 2-1. to one. Look at the speed of Bauer in that transition game. But it all started with Grigo with that quick pass. And all of a sudden, now it's Cold Spring Harbor in control of the ball. And we're all even. Yeah, penalty is over. And a good job by Cold Spring Harbor's man down unit to keep the lead secure. And with a minute and a half to go in the opening quarter. Andrew Mazzi with both goals for Cold Spring Harbor. Jacob Apat found the back of the net for his second goal in as many games. And we're at the one-minute mark now in this first quarter. And, John, like you said earlier, the 90-second clock being implemented next year. They can take as much time as they want with the ball at the moment. And they're going to probably utilize that clock to try to set up something within the last 30. Ryan McGloin. Jimmy Gannon comes out on him. As McGloin dishes, quick hitter over the crossbar. As that was Sam Bruno vying for his go first goal of the contest. Yeah, and Sam Bruno collecting that one quickly and getting that shot off. A good scoring opportunity there for the Seahawks, but the Vikings now with under 30 seconds coming back the other way. Quick transition here. And so here is Harrison Behan. And Behan. Now with 20 seconds to go, slings it far side. Port Washington would love to find the equalizer before the second quarter as that whistles wide to the left. Ben Christopherados stops the clock with 12 seconds. Harry Behan. The drive, good defense by Cold Spring Harbor. Up top, Steve Braunschweiger steps into it. And another save. James Grigo with four saves in the first quarter, keeping Cold Spring Harbor in front 2-1. to one. Over Port Washington on the road. It's been a fun one. It's been a low-scoring affair. Thanks in part to James Grigo. We head to the second on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to VarsityMediaPass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. The sun is setting here at Port Washington as it is Cold Spring Harbor with a 2-1 lead. And even though the sun is dwindling here, that does not mean that the sun is dwindling on the lacrosse season. And have Varsity Media come out and broadcast your game with your own lacrosse sportscast. Great for rivalry games, homecoming, senior day, and playoffs. Email varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com or give us a call 917-470-0864. If you mention this ad, you get 25% off of your sports cast. Cold Spring Harbor with a 2-1 lead, thanks in part to Andrew Mazzi finding the back of the net a pair of times. He's got nine goals on the year. Jacob Apat with his lone goal. That's where we stand right now. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. Sam Bruno in there with Griffin Marvin, who's really handled this position well. Uh, the first-year face-off guy for Port Washington. Yeah, he's done a really good job down there, and on the last one, winning it. On the rake here, he's battling and picked up by Port. Story of the game so far, though, John, Grigo in net. A fantastic game. So it's a combination of Mazzi and Grego doing big things. Now, the thing with Grigo this year is that he's a much better clearer. We haven't seen it in this game yet because he really hasn't had the opportunities, but 
Every open shot, it seems, he's been able to stop that Port Washington has gotten. Yeah, he did do one nice job, though, getting that ball to Bauer on that quick clear. And Bauer with a scoring opportunity showing his wheels. Here's Liam McCarville. Four goals on the year. Long hop, Steve Braunschweiger. A little do -si do with Bruno. Bruno getting a lot of playing time today here in the first quarter. Joe Braunschweiger swings it far side. Backing inside, McCarville skips over the crossbar and will stay with the Vikings. Really nice roll dodge there by McCarville, and you've seen that from this Port Washington team quite a bit. You've got to wonder that they're practicing that on the fields in between games. How about this for Port Washington um, on the family tree side? Three brothers, two sets of identical twins as that shot whistles wide, and that was from one of the sets of twins, Liam McCarville, on the save from Grigo. Yeah, so the identical twins. I don't believe Grigo has any siblings, but it wouldn't surprise me with Cold Spring Harbor. It seems like a lot of their um, roster over the last couple of years have the same last names over and over again. As they're able to clear up a good interception, that's Joe Braunschweiger trying to get one back. Christopher Rano's in front. Tic-tac-toe. It's Will Amity with the finish. Amity with a really nice finish there and then a little shove. And we'll take a look at it here. Brunschweiger gets that pass out. And a quick, quick pass. And the goal for Amity. And a really nice job there with the tic-tac-toe play. And so just exactly what the doctor ordered for Port Washington. And Rob, with the way that Cold Spring Harbor's defense has been so far, um, for Port Washington, they want to they want to cultivate their own offense based on their defense. Timeout, and we'll take it with them as well. With just over ten minutes to go in the second quarter, we're tied at two on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We're watching Varsity Media, New York's premier high school sports network. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life, and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Cold Spring Harbor at 4-2 and two on the year. And as we take a look at our top rankings on the Varsity Media Sports Network, and Cold Spring Harbor right there at number 14. That will be updated. If they get a win today, it'll be 5-2. and two, And I'd imagine that they go up in the standings. But you really can't go wrong. St. Anthony's with a big victory over Chaminade today. But I know a lot of people will have their gripes when it comes to this. But pretty fair assessment so far on the Varsity Media Top 15 poll, Rob. Yeah, and you've got the private schools represented, Bayport, Blue Point, out of Suffolk, south side, the cream of the crop here in Nassau County. But absolutely, the rankings sorted themselves out quite fairly. Well, on south side, ranked number four, and they're still undefeated. First victory over Garden City last week for the first time since 2008. And they've, they've just been churning out some really good sport teams over there in Southside in Rockville Center. Basketball program doing a great job last year and this year. Here's Jacob A. Pat scored the first port goal of the game. Ben Christopheratos had the assist on the last goal. And a fantastic finish in front as Will Amity had it. And Grigo gobbles it up. It looks like he had a read on that the entire time. And again, that's the benefit of sometimes when you take those shots, changing planes on Grigo just to give him some different looks. When he sees them where they're coming, he's going to make that save. And a good clear there as well. As Rex O'Connor 
We'll slow it down. Rex's brother, the starting defenseman a year ago, and of course now he gets the start in the midfield for Dennis Bond and his crew. And there's Bauer dishing it off to McGloin. You'll love this, Rob, about McGloin. He's really more of a throwback kid, very rugged, um, someone who could play in any era. Yeah, and he said he's a talented kid and someone who's willing to throw the body around. And, and you do, we do love that, watching those types of players out there, the guys that are the uh, not always the heralded. Here's Andrew Mazzi. A low percentage shot and then slips up top. Kevin Burns making a move in front, but they can't find him. So Alex Bauer will drop it off. Here's McGloin. McGloin working on Jimmy Rather. And now McGloin would rather give it off to Roy Testa. And you can see now getting a little chippy on the defensive side for poor Washington. Noga using his stick quite a bit before. Rob, you have to wonder, too, with no shot clock um, this year, this being the last year, do you think you'll get more or less penalties with the shot clock upcoming? Because the only argument is if you're a team like Cold Spring Harbor that's just wheeling and dealing it around, you're getting chippy in between that. Whereas if you have to shoot it every 90 seconds, you might not get an opportunity to penalize. Or maybe it's the opposite. I don't now, know. Your I, thoughts? I kind of agree with you there. I think the 90-second clock is going to be one of the best things for the sport. Swept in front and a save. Max Sinone. Blocks the five hole and the clear. I know made that look really easy, scooping it up and getting it out. But talking to a few coaching friends of mine, they're happy about that shot clock, especially towards the end of the game. I think it'll create less penalties because there's a lot of frustration when teams are just dilly-dallying around. And people want to see the shots on net. It's going to force teams to set up their offenses a little quicker. Pass through a tight window, skirts through everyone. Well, and I'm glad that you used the transcript from the legislative um, <laughs> meeting there. Uh, coaches want to prevent the dilly-dallying um, that goes on. I we saw a lot of dilly-dallying right. in the Beth Page game uh, against Lindbrook where they just passed the ball for three minutes. And I'm not going to knock Beth Page for doing it. They had the lead. They earned it. Now go out there. The rules permit you to do it. So carry on. Yeah, it seems like most of the coaches, though, don't even want to be in that position. They, they want to see the game played. Well... Max Inone's playing the game very well. The keeper for Port Washington, keeping it a 2-2 game. And possession will stay with the Seahawks after that scintillating shot by Gunnar Anderson, living up to his first name. And after that play, Nick Noga giving a little shove again. Noga defensively for Port Washington, getting really chippy back there. Yeah, he's someone that's made a lot of strides, and Isaac Neal says there's not um, a lot that you have to do to get him going. He's someone who's very passionate, takes pride in his position, and... Uh, gives it his all every day in practice and, of course, during the games. And not one of the bigger guys out there. So you can see he's uh, got a little chip on his shoulder. Rex O'Connor, 1v1 with Joe Braunschweiger. Roy Testa curls out of it. Roy and Roger, the two testers. Testas, excuse me, and another save I know. And now starting to get... A little closer to the cage. You can see a little bit more pressure now by the Seahawks. Less dilly-dallying. Dilly-dilly. <laughs> Galloping up the field. This is Harrison Behan. All right, check that. that yeah, it's Harry Behan, and now swung over to your side. Yeah, Behan showing some speed there, getting that ball up the field. And it's going to be a reset now here for the Vikings as Joe Brunschwager moving down. McCarville and Steve Brunschwager. Driving inside, whips it wide to the left. And that's a big difference right there, uh, Rob, what we're seeing with Steve Brunschwager this year as opposed to last year. Isaac Neal said the biggest key for Steve Braunschweiger is patience and creating your own shot, not forcing. He was a little bit patient, took what the defense gave him, didn't hit the shot, but 
uh, showed patient attributes there. And sometimes that's what it takes, you know. But at the same time, I do like when Port Washington gets a little bit more aggressive and tries to set things up here. Some really nice moves by Lang. Yeah, but just upended. And that was James Howell. Big physical presence down low for Cold Spring Harbor. Both defenses now seeming like they're trying to assert themselves a little bit more physically, put some pressure on these attackers. Lang battling again with the long pole, draws a couple of long poles, batted aside, and it'll stay with Port. Yeah, they are absolutely swarming now defensively, and you got to like that. It's going to pick up the pace of play when the defenders start attacking a little bit more. Here's Liam McCarville. McCarvel skips it, and wide to the right. So Port Washington putting together a possession here. Now it's just a matter of finding the back of the net. Yeah, they've had a few shots that have missed, but have maintained possession throughout. A lot of tugging there by Howell, no call. Joe Braunschweiger. Yeah, the referee's definitely letting it go a little bit down there. Howell's had a few. Grigo again. Looks like he got a piece of it and hit the top pipe. That was Lang on that. Oh, no, it was McCarvel. Sorry, on that shot. Braunschweiger dangles. Three and a half to play. Slips it down low. Another save, Grigo. And then he and Lang getting tied up together. And uh, what a great save by Grigo. He's been standing on his head today as he just continues to be a dominant force in the net. As we'll take another look at Grigo standing between the pipes, Rob. Yeah, and I've got this as his ninth save of the game. That one low, he just gets that knee down and bounces it out. But he has done this all game. High, low, no matter what, he's able to read it off the stick. And he's just been making save after save. So I've got, again, nine saves to two goals. He's having a fantastic game right now. Well, we know the Power Conference is no easy feat. And, of course, Isaac Neal might have one of the toughest schedules this year for Port Washington. They already had a game canceled uh, due to the rain. That was Northport that they were supposed to play earlier in the year. But just looking forward against Smithtown West, Manhasset, uh, it doesn't get easy for the Vikings. No, it doesn't. As you said, going into Smithtown West, Manhasset, one of the cream of the crop in this Nassau League. Uh, Baldwin, Syosset, it's a tough run. And it starts today, you know, going up against Cold Spring Harbor. This is no easy task. They're coming up into the meat of the schedule. But coming off that win, looking to build off something today, they are tied at the moment. This could be a huge win and a motivation for this young Vikings team. And, of course, if you can't make that game on April 24th, you're a Port parent or fan, well, we'll have it for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Ending with Garden City, no easy task either. No, not at all, and... You know, I know that Garden City lost uh, their first Long Island game in quite some time when it comes to uh, losing to Southside, but if you think that Garden City is vulnerable this year, well, you've got another thing coming. Oh, even the way you just said that there, I know that they lost their first game. <laughs> you know, that tells you how dominant they've been. And Garden City, one of those communities where you're driving down Stewart Avenue and you just see a horde of maroon jerseys with lacrosse sticks. They've got a lot to choose from, and... Those young kids look forward to growing up to wearing Garden City jerseys. I find it weird that everybody in Garden City wears a Trojan helmet, though. That's something <laughs> that I don't understand. Community. It's all a sense it, of community, right. John. But at the deli? Doesn't make sense. They need some Viking helmets up here. <laughs> I'd wear a Viking helmet. Just <laughs> Swung across the midfield. Here's Tommy McCarville. An opportunity for Port Washington to go in front going into the half. It's a Port Washington team that has 17 juniors on the roster. They're still looking for their identity. I'm looking for the lead as well. And we can see, we were talking a little bit earlier, both of these teams not really high-scoring machines. And you can see why. Everything seems very deliberate, very set up. Joe Braunschweiger working with Sam Bruno. Skips it to X. Brendan Lang trudges the hit, whips it, Grigo. 
Not in his house. No, what a save there by Griega. And again, I've got him now in double digits. Lang coming out from that X position. We'll take a look here. He just flies a beautiful little spinorama move there. Getting shoved and beat up. The shot. And Greco getting a piece of it, and it goes wide. We'll get back into the play now. Yeah, poor Washington. Uh, took a shot, it went wide, and the, stays with the Vikings. Still a minute and a half to go before the half. Hey, Pat, what a nice move there. McCarville and Braunschweiger. Here's Tommy McCarville. And Grigo from a knee again. It looked like he caught a little pipe after that. Did he get a piece of it, John? It, it might have hit the pipe. That's the goalie's best friend as Grigo once again keeping Port Washington off the board. So do I put that down as an 11 save or what? Uh, he'll take it. He'll take it. That's absolutely incredible. Two goals, 11 saves. So Port Washington getting the ball on net. They're just running into the wall. Named Grigo. Braunschweiger. Joe gives it off to Liam McCarville. Just over a minute to play in the opening half. It's been a low-scoring battle at that, and that's exactly how Port Washington wants it. Coming off a 7-6 win over Massapequa. Oh. Hit on the deck. Howell, a hit to the temple. No call. Stays with Port Washington. Battling inside. Joe Braunschweiger curls it and whistles it wide. I'm a little flabbergasted by that. Usually any kind of contact with the head is a quick call. But Howell getting away with a lot back there. And if you're going to get away with it, I guess you keep doing it. Yeah, why not? And again, it's Joe Brunschwager in number 22. And Jacob Apat driving on Bruno. And a flag finally out with 30 seconds to go. On the short hop, Joe Brunschwager. And now Cold Spring Harbor clamps down on it. And I believe it's going to be Sam Bruno going off for some contact. Yeah, Bruno's going to head to the box. And Bruno right there, number 47. We'll take the penalty with 22 seconds to go. So again, with the Brunschweigers, it's Joe wearing number 22, Steve wearing number 15. Joe putting on that strong physical display just a few seconds ago. And with 22 seconds remaining in this half, it'll be an emo. For the Vikings. This could be a huge opportunity, John. Big 22 seconds here to try to go into the half with a lead. Brendan Lang. Eight seconds. As Lang the drive. And another flag comes out. And it looks like we're going to go into the halftime. Tied at two. And a penalty upcoming at that. But Port Washington. Trying to get in front. But it was James Grigo denying him. We'll have a penalty when we come back, but it's 2-2 at the end of the first half. You're watching Nassau County Lacrosse on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Dante does Terrific it again! defensive play. Dante Zadaro. Steps up and scores. A jump shot, Fennell. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports.
Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or call 516-403-2050. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050. Or email Ben at varsitymedia.net. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel. Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. 
Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs, or give us a call at 516-403-2050. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or call 516-403-2050. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050. Or email Ben at varsitymedia.net. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Red Fox. We welcome you back to Port Washington. And it is Port Washington and Cold Spring Harbor deadlocked in a 2-2 tie. He's Rob Anderson, the movie aficionado. I'm John Perez. Rob, what really stood out to you in that first half? Well, obviously it's the play of Mr. Grigo and Nett absolutely dominating that crease at the moment. But at the same time, uh, I've noticed like both teams right now, and I've said it, Playing very physically, defensively. Cold Spring Harbor getting away with a lot back there until finally getting flagged. 
and those flags are going to play a role now going into the second half, John. Yeah, James Grigo, 11 saves in the first half. He was dominant, and Max Inone went eye-to-eye -eye with him as well as we'll have our opening face-off for the start of the third quarter. And there'll be a new face-off man in there with Dylan Buckley, at least we see right now. And Griffin Marvin has done a good job, and a new face-off person as well seems to be Alex Bauer until everyone gets sent off, I think. And so... Remember, there were penalties at the end of the second quarter, so an EMO opportunity for Port Washington. And they'll have that with the man advantage. And about 30 seconds left in the EMO. So that carries over. And now Port Washington with an opportunity to get in front. Will Amity had one of the two goals. As Andrew Mazzi scored both goals for Cold Spring Harbor and Jacob Apat with the lone remaining goal for Port Washington. That's where we stand, 2-2. Up top is Brendan Lang. Dylan Buckley. Amity thought about it, and Buckley reverses course. And we're almost at even strength, so they're really taking their time with this one. I thought they'd try to go for that really quick scoring opportunity. Well, now we're back and at we're even, even strength yeah. as Alex Bauer comes out. And not even a shot off during that one minute. What did you see defensively from Cold Spring Harbor that didn't allow Port Washington to hoist. They were playing a, a, a nice zone, but there was no pressure really by Port Washington. While you can give credit to the zone defense by Cold Spring Harbor, the Vikings not really putting much of an attack on. Brendan Lang, 1v1 with Alex Bauer. And skips it near side. Here's Will Amity. And they've got guys, John, that can dodge, that can lower the shoulder and, and go with a bull dodge, can, can spin. Braunschweiger sweeps and knocked aside. James Grigo escorts it out of play. And then some extra physicality underneath as Hunter Ulico stepped on top of Steve Braunschweiger after the shot. Yeah, it looked like Alex Bauer had a few words for him too. Driving inside, here's Harry I know, nowhere to go. And here's James Howell with the denial. So this game is getting a little chippier as the weather gets a little chillier. And the sun is finally down. Got nothing but lights here on the north shore of Long Island. Tommy McCarville working with Rex O'Connor. And slings it near side. The step up, Braunschweiger over the crossbar and... Brendan Lang was an X, so it stays with Port. And that was Steve Braunschweiger there with the shot. And I'm, sorry, John, I'm, I'm waiting for them to get more aggressive. These shots from out deep against Grigo are just not working. Well, and that's a point of emphasis for Isaac Neal as that skips all the way up the field. And so Cold Spring Harbor trying to gain possession, and they do. And a good job by Andrew Mazzi, who is waiting up front. Scooped it up. He and Roy Testa were the two closest Seahawks. And now it's Rex O'Connor to start it off for Cold Spring Harbor. And you can see the long sticks in the backfield of the Seahawks giving some high fives. They're getting real physical down there. Cold Spring Harbor 4-2 and two coming into today off a 10-5 victory against Horace Greeley. And now the schedule really ratchets up for the Seahawks. After today on the road against Huntington and then Syosset, Wanta and Yorktown and Rye. This is a Cold Spring Harbor team that's unafraid to schedule outside of Long Island, particularly in Westchester. Yeah, quite a bus ride too. I mean, you've got to be prepared for those. I don't think they're doing overnighters on non-leagues. No, and I heard the charter's not in use either. <laughs> Roy Testa. Far side, it's Ryan McGloin. McGloin and Jimmy Gannon. Power the catch, the swim, and the pass. Yeah, Brunschweiger giving chase there, but couldn't keep up, and now it's the Seahawks setting up. Swept in the middle, a big takedown as Burns was pushed from behind. No flag. There's Jimmy Ratner there. Getting that shove, and then, like you said, a little chop of the stick and nothing called. So these officials letting both teams play today. 2-2 Two -two game, and they don't want to be a part of the decision. Do you think Jimmy would rather lay a big hit or score a goal? We'll find out in a second. Driving inside, that's Harry oh. Behan. 
never comes through, and I know I'm fighting for it, and it'll stay with the Vikings. And that was Pisano there with a big defensive play to dislodge the ball and thwart that scoring attempt. Dennis Bond said Pisano's the difference maker this year, and while he's not Patrick Pisano, who obviously has gone on to bigger and better things, obviously playing um, up at the next level at Yale, but he said, hey, I'll take any Pisano, and they've got all the lacrosse IQ and traits, and he wants in a player. And you see a Timmy Great going into that slide position, picking up the attackers. Also pretty physical, laid a few hits down low. And you can see him right now just kind of stalking any white jersey that gets near the crease. Braunschweiger to Steve Braunschweiger. Amity. And again, you look at look at how Pisano just like again stalks the prey. He just follows them, keeps the stick on them, lets them know he's there. Yeah, for those of you watching at home, Pisano wearing number 19 for Cold Spring Harbor. As Port Washington rounds it out again. We really haven't seen the Vikings try and penetrate and create their own shots. And maybe we have to give more credit to this, as a laser beam wide, a little bit more credit to this Seahawk defense. You know, I'm starting to pay attention a little bit more. And again, like I said, number 19 is drawing my eye contact. Ben Christopherados, only an eighth grader, smart athlete. Here's Will Amity. What's really interesting about the New York State rule is that um, eighth graders are not allowed to play junior varsity, but they could play at the varsity level. So that's why Christopher Rados is on the team. That's why Max Inone was on the team last year starting in net uh, as an eighth grader. Sweeping shot. Grigo bats it away. But, you know, it is a pretty rigorous process for them to get up there. There's a whole set of testing that they need to go through, plus doctor's appointments that they need to check certain puberty levels to make sure that they've hit those markers. So not easy for a middle schooler to get on a varsity team. No, not at all. And it just goes to show how good of the athletes that they are as well to be trusted and to play at this level. Yeah, it's rare. You know, to see one is one thing. To see two is a whole other animal, especially two starters. Bauer steps in front of the shot and a whistle on a pileup. And there's the eighth grader, Christopher Rados. But it also tells you, again, the kind of condition we spoke about it that the Vikings are in, that they're bringing up that kind of talent. They're kind of doing a reset right now. Braunschweiger was calling for it. Steps up and rings it wide. That was Steve Braunschweiger again. Eight points on the season, looking for his fifth goal of the year. And another great defensive play there, Alex Bauer getting down low. Joe Braunschweiger bounces wide. They're not letting poor Washington get close. Poor Washington hasn't really taken too many opportunities, but they're just not getting much space. And any time they shoot, they're shooting from outside and not really changing. The two goals they scored, they changed the plane. They changed the sight line for Greco. No, and it's been a good defensive battle, too. They've rotated over, but you're right. They're just not letting uh, Port drive in there. Joe hey, Braunschweiger. you got to be more creative with Grigo. You can't just keep firing lasers where he could see them coming from a mile away. He's too good. Christopherados. McCarville sweeps it. Grigo bounces over the crossbar, and Grigo out of his cage. And scooped up, it's Joe Braunschweiger. And a pass, and nobody's home. And a turnover. The Seahawks take over. Yeah, it looked like that was intended for Harry, I know, and missed pretty far. And here come the Seahawks. And how about this? Seven and a half minutes into this quarter, and neither team has been able to break the ice. No, no shots. No shots on net so far. And both teams still continue to be very deliberate with the passing game. 
not having much success trying to find alleys. Brady McKean, the three-sport athlete, football, basketball, and lacrosse. Another old-school player and shoved aside. Max Inone on the trailing shot on the near side. That was Gunnar Anderson. Yeah, Anderson made a really nifty move to get the open shot, but then put it wide. That was a great scoring opportunity. It was Gunnar Anderson. Tore his ACL and in indoors in the winter last year, so is finally at 100% after missing uh, the full season last year. Wearing number 27 up top and should be getting the pass, and he does. We talked about the sports injuries at halftime, and the ACL, one of the worst to deal with and pretty common in lacrosse and soccer. Testa. You're going to get no argument from me on that injury front. Anderson sweeps and bounces it wide. So they're looking to get Anderson some more space out in front, but so far two shots wide. But they're finding, finding the stick. Final three minutes to play in the third. Good ground ball up front. That's Jimmy Gannon. Then wrestled away. Ball still loose. And a pickup. Back and in. a short dart. Dylan Riley. Comes near side. Here's Kevin Burns. An athletic lefty who's really grown into his body this year. Physical kind of dodger. And on the field now is Dennis Bond trying to get some sparks out of his offense. As Sean Ecker finds the back of the cage. And Cold Spring Harbor goes in front. Or check that. That's Brady McKean. His fifth goal of the year. And the Seahawks with a 3-2 lead. Yeah, nice job by the junior to jump up. And John, he was getting whacked and hacked the entire way. Kept his eye on the net and finds it right between the wickets there. And I know couldn't get down quick enough. Couldn't get the stick down. So a nice goal there by McKean to finally break the tie. And the first shot in the third quarter on net goes in. Brady McKean now with four points over his last two games as Bruno comes out of the fray. Bruno with a win percentage north of 40% coming into today at 42%. And now with a chance to put his team up by two, late stage is third quarter. Under two minutes in this third quarter, and the Seahawks in control now. Here's Ryan McGloin, slips it near side. The times of possession in the offensive zone have been pretty dragged out each time. You haven't seen much in the transition game. Not a lot of fast breaks other than early on when Grigo found Bauer. Jacob Apat, do -si do with Sam Bruno. The drive inside, Bruno. Stays with Cold Spring Harbor. Just under a minute and a half to play in the third. Andrew Mazzi, already with two goals today. And they're definitely paying a little bit more attention to him, which has opened up Bruno and Anderson, who have gotten shots but haven't been able to convert yet. Bauer speeding inside and scores. And what a play by Bauer there, with a little bull dodge lower in that shoulder and driving right through the Vikings. And, John, this might be a, a big, big change of events here in this game. We'll see how poor Washington reacts emotionally now. Or is this going to be a run by the Seahawks? And take a look. Just lower the shoulder right before that shot. Cuts through two defenders. And nothing but net. Bauer's second consecutive game with a goal. He's got seven tallies on the year. And now 4-2 is the lead for Cold Spring Harbor with 70 seconds to go in the third. This is going to be a big test of metal now for poor Washington. We'll see if they could respond positively because those are two big goals. In oh. a quarter that kind of dragged on. And a huge ground ball. That was Roy Testa. Well, the thing with Port Washington is that they'll hang with some of the best teams on the island, but they'll go through these dry spells, and it's just a matter of not capitalizing. And in the blink of an eye, they have the ball for seven minutes, and then, of course, they open up their eyes again, and they're down two. Well, they thunder... 45 seconds to play in the third. And they want to make sure that it's only two going into this half to give them an opportunity to reset and start thinking about their offensive game a little differently as Coach Neal is going to have to come up with a plan to get a little more aggressive on the shots. 
Mazzy to Anderson. Gunnar Anderson. Good defense by Port in front. Save, I know, right off the mask. Seahawks pick up the ground ball. That's Rex O'Connor. It's another shot in front. Bounces over everyone. With 2.5 seconds to go. A little more confidence in the Seahawks' step. You saw Anderson connect with O'Connor and then O'Connor to Mazzy, but we're going to go into this half. It's 4-2. Three quarters in the books. Cold Spring Harbor with a 4-2 lead over Port Washington. And it could have been worse, but Max Sinone, good way to use your head in front as that skips over everyone. And we go to the fourth with Cold Spring Harbor leading 4-2 on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for... new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Welcome you back to Paul D. Schreiber High School, Port Washington, New York. Alongside Rob Anderson, I'm John Perez. Cold Spring Harbor with a 4-2 lead over the hometown Vikings. It's now time for our Speed Island speedy play of the game. Not a lot of offense here today, but we saw Alex Bauer turn on the burners as he scored the fourth Cold Spring Harbor goal of the game. As Alex Bauer driving inside and slipping a pass, Max Inone, to give the Seahawks a 4-2 lead. Train with Onyx Salva and the gang located in Garden City. Book a session today at www.speedislandny.com. Now, it's now or never, Rob, for Port Washington. This is a team that held on to the ball north of five minutes in the third quarter, did not score. Thanks in large part to the defense of Cold Spring Harbor. Well, what do they have to do to break through? I think they're just going to have to get more aggressive with the dodges instead of trying to play that perimeter, look for those shots from the outside. Yes, it's been a stingy Seahawks defense, but they got to start asserting their physicality. And maybe this is the time, John. Yeah, it could On possibly cue. be, yeah. <laughs> we always talk about the broadcaster's jinx. Well, there it is. But they do need to start pushing back a little bit. It's been a very physical Seahawks defense. And now poor Washington with a chance to play up a man. Got well, an injury. Yeah, have a player shaken up and try to identify who that is afterwards. And that looks like it's Griffin Marvin who comes off for poor Washington. And so now up top, it's Brendan Lang. Pass deflected. And goes through everyone, Brendan Lang. Two goals against Massapequa. That was the first victory of the year for Port Washington, a 7-6 win over the Chiefs. Looking for two in a row, but they've got their work cut out for them against the two-time defending New York State champs. Dylan Buckley. And we're all even again. So Port Washington up a man twice and not getting a shot off. They're going to, again, need to be a little more aggressive down low. They've got to start making their way to the cage. They've got to make Grigo uncomfortable in there. Right now, it is his house. Here's Lang. Big hit. Upended. Ryan McGloin trying to stay with it. As here's Port Washington again to try and find a shot. Swung up top. 
Here's Braunschweiger. To Amity. Shot never got through and a whistle afterwards. And a flag is out towards the midfield. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be McGloin going off for some stick work. Maybe some high contact there on that defensive play. Yeah, it'll be a cross check. So he comes off. It looks like there's a little bit of chirping going on down there now too. A lot of these uh, players starting to talk to one another and maybe the tension's mounting. But that's two penalties now called against the Seahawks team in the first few minutes. Yeah, no, Port Washington has to capitalize in the worst way. They've got to shoot. Amen. And you can just see Timmy Pisano, the long pole. He's got a big frame as well, so he doesn't really leave an open window there. But that defense once again standing tall. And Grigo doesn't even have to make a save as he clears it up ahead. And here comes Cole Newman. Yeah, scooped it up, and that's a big turnover there as the transition game. And O'Connor making some nice moves, but he coughs it up, and now we're coming back the other way with Brunschwager. Well, Port didn't have numbers, so they settle it back down again. And here's Tommy McCarville. So an opportunity there for O'Connor to just kill that clock down and not have that happen. Well, either way, Port Washington gets the goal that they were looking for. Tommy McCarville scores his third of the year, and that makes it 4-3. to three. And, John, sometimes plays happen at different parts of the field, and it happened with O'Connor coughing up the ball. And now here's that big shot by McCarville, and it just fooled Grigo. I think he thought it was going over the net. He looked up in the air, and then all of a sudden it found its way under the uh, goalpost. And oh. under the crossbar it went. Well, and now that's two of the three goals that Port Washington has scored uh, that started from their defense. Yeah, and, and bounced. You know, all bounce shots and give it a different look. I, I have to think he was a little screened on that play, and he thought it was going up and over the net. Timmy Pisano took the face off for Cold Spring Harbor as Port Washington wins it. So a nice energy boost there for Port Washington, and I hope the Seahawks know they've got to control the sticks a little bit. They don't want to keep going a man down. Steve Braunschweiger. From X, Will Amity. Amity up top, Steve Braunschweiger. Someone who's so hard to take off the field, says Isaac Neal, as he drives inside and skips it over the crossbar on a long bounce. On that last play, you saw... Rista Ferrado is doing everything he could to try to get open and create a scoring opportunity, try to catch a pass there, but they're not able to find him as the pressure of the Seahawks defense just continues. Harry Ainone. Amity catches the high pass. Up top, Apat scored the first Port Washington goal of the game. So we've seen this, John, back and forth as far as time of possession, and right now... APAC, good swim move. The drive, shot never got through. And good stick work by Hunter Ulico. And a timeout taken by Cold Spring Harbor. With 7.55 to go in regulation. And we'll take it with them as well on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We're watching Varsity Media, New York's premier high school sports network. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. 
Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Cold Spring Harbor with a 4-3 lead over Port Washington. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. We spoke about it in the open, Rob. But Cold Spring Harbor with four wins in their first six matches, four in a row, and now they're going to the tough part of their schedule. Huntington, Syosset, and Wanta, never easy, especially in this power conference. No, and after that loss to Southside early on, that was a big one, and now they're going into some other big ones. And you did say going to Yorktown and Rye on the road to play up in Westchester, Massapequa, ending with Garden City. It's a tough road to hoe, but Cold Spring Harbor in a good position by winning those four in a row. At least they're going into it with a little money in the bank. We'll have that Syosset Cold Spring Harbor game next week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. A later start, 7.30 start time over at Cold Spring Harbor. Jacob A. Pat through the fray, bounces around, and now starts it off with Tommy McCarville. And out of that timeout, a different level of energy here for this Viking team. Clock ticking away, but plenty of time left. Seven and a half remaining in this fourth quarter to try to tie this game up. Liam McCarville swings it over to X, and now it's Tommy McCarville. Jacob A. Pat. Tommy McCarville scoring the last goal. That made it four to three. Jacob A. Pat with the first goal, and that never got through. So when Coach Bond took that timeout, I don't think he was expecting for the Vikings to grab it and start controlling possession again. He wants his team to try to get that ball, bring it down to the offensive zone. You keep playing with fire. If you stay down low, as locked down as this Seahawks defense has been, you don't want to give the Vikings too many scoring opportunities. Well, the Seahawks so far really haven't given them a chance to drive inside as Braunschweiger skips it over the net. That was Steve with the shot that missed wide. And you're right, you might be playing with fire, but with what Bond has seen so far, his defense has been more than capable of handling Port Washington. In fact, numerous possessions where they just don't even get a shot off. Yeah, the combination of that and his goalkeeper. Good swim move, Grigo with the shoulder. And that was APAT on that shot. But again, John, you can't let things like that happen. You are playing with fire. Eventually something's going to go in. And we've seen this game played on either end. Again, not much going on in the transition game. Once a team gets possession, they kind of hold it down low for a while, get a few shots off, and then it goes the other way. Tommy McCarville bounces off his defender, now slings it over. Steve Braunschweiger. Jacob A. Pat driving on Rex O'Connor inside. Grigo with another save and a flag. Two flags come out. It looks like A. Pat might have got contact if they got hit after that shot but you got to give APAT a lot of credit there that's the second time he drove to the net and created a little chaos down there and Grigo doing what Grigo does as we get another look APAT coming in and oh my god absolutely crushed there by McGloin the second time McGloin's going to go in the box back to back that's going to be an unreleasable too as McGloin is off and Port Washington now with the EMO an opportunity to put themselves uh Right back at square one and tie it at four. Yeah, that was an unnecessary shot. And I'd imagine that's something else Coach Brown said. Like, let's not go a man down. Well, McGloin letting his emotions get the better of him there. Quick shot, save. Grigo on I known. Incredible save there by Grigo. And then to kick it out wide. But the Vikings maintain possession. And a credit to APAC because he created all that chaos in those minutes there to create this opportunity. Here's I know, catches a low pass, Brandon Lang. Had an alley, deferred not to shoot. To X, Harry I know, second opportunity off the near side. Yeah, I know, and with a, a bouncer there, but great positioning by Grigo to cover his post. In stride, here's Rex O'Connor. Trying to clear it and goes to the long pole in Hunter Ulico. you got to love how the Vikings just clamped down and swarmed on him there. They want that ball back. Ulico, a very versatile player, was the fourth defenseman last year and 
Now Cold Spring Harbor with five minutes to play in the fourth. An opportunity to just take the air out of the ball. And I think this is what we were talking about where the 90-second rule will change the game. The Vikings are going to have to get aggressive here, but not too aggressive. They need to dislodge that ball and get something going the other way. Bruno only a junior, gives it off to Bauer, also a junior. A veteran of the squad and someone who's been Mr. Consistent in his time at Cold Spring Harbor. McGloin back out on the field, and we were saying earlier about being a throwback kid. I guess that hit is kind of a throwback move. Throwback to what? The gladiator? The glad yeah, the throwback to the uh, the Greek warriors. <laughs> what do they call it? Old school hockey, old school lacrosse. <laughs> Eddie Shore. Well, you know, I mean, that hit was more like the Hanson brothers. <laughs> You don't want to see it in high school sports, but I like no. it in the pros. I just want to know if uh, McGloin plays with his toys after each game. <laughs> Stall warning's on, so here comes Cold Spring Harbor. It's Alex Bauer. Slipped in front. McGloin shot, whistles wide. He actually hit his own guy as Andrew Mazzi took the ricochet, but it'll stay with uh, Cold Spring Harbor. Yeah, laser shot there by McGloin that got tapped. Check his knuckles for foil. <laughs> All right, no more. There's Ryan McGloin. Spins out of it. Drawing a lot of attention, but a few spin moves there. and He's been controlling the ball really well down low, making up for that penalty. And gives it over to Alex Bauer and... Cold Spring Harbor looking for the back-breaking goal as that slid aside, I know. So, John, as much as they have a chance to, to go back to the old dilly-dally, they are taking shots and trying to, you know, again, score the backbreaker. Well, this is where you should dilly-dally. With three minutes to go, you've got the lead. Yeah. You've put yourself in this position. But I like that they're taking shots, you know, preparing for next year. Maybe. Kevin Burns. I haven't seen a lot of Kevin Burns today as Bauer denied I know using the chicken wing. And it'll stay with Cold Spring Harbor. Yeah, Bauer teed that one up. Thought he was going to get one in the back of the net, but it's again in control. Seahawks. McGloin up top, spun, and Bruno misses. So they continue to take their shots and continue to maintain control. And this has been the storyline of the entire game. Whoever gets the ball down low manages to keep possession for a good three, four, five minutes. Here's Roy Testa. In front, and there's the backbreaker. Cold Spring Harbor has opened it up. Roy Testa with his second goal of the year. 5-3 Seahawks on the road. And I got to be honest, John, I don't think poor Washington thought he was even going to shoot. If you watch, he just kind of takes a few steps. This is Bauer taking that shot. That's the save. But then if you saw the shot by Testa, Testa just kind of like jogged out in front. Looked like he was just going to set something up with a pass and instead turned and whipped it in the net. I really just caught poor Washington on their heels. Yeah. Well, now Griffin Marvin will have to win the faceoff. And he does, something that Port desperately needed. And a timeout taken by the Vikings. With just over two minutes to play here in regulation. As we'll take a break and come back for the conclusion of this one on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Here's Dante! Does Terrific it again! Defensive play. Dante Pizarro. Delico! Ties it up! By Diego! steps up and scores! A 
jump shot for Nell. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. Yeah. Welcome you back for the final two minutes to play in the fourth quarter. It's Cold Spring Harbor with a 5-3 lead over Port Washington. He's Rob Anderson. I'm John Perez. And Rob, Cold Spring Harbor doing everything they can to at least give themselves an edge. And, of course, that last goal by Roy Testa caught Port Washington napping and uh, could be the goal that extends the Cold Spring Harbor winning streak. The way that this has been going, a very low-scoring affair, it's, it's going to be a tough row to hoe for the Vikings to get back on the board, especially with the play of Grigo throughout the entire game and this lockdown Cold Spring Harbor defense. But like you said, Testa just kind of wandering into space, turning, firing a shot, and making this a little lopsided now, 5-3 to three, as Port Washington attempts to get back in here and try to tie this game. Steve Braunschweiger swings it around. This is Harry Behan trying to charge inside, and Christopher Rados up top skips off the stick of Braunschweiger. Cold Spring Harbor looking for the ground ball. A ground ball by Cold Spring Harbor could win it for the Seahawks and a whistle. And a timeout taken by the Seahawks with 1.18 to go here as well. And while we have a break in the action, we'd like to tell you to book a sports cast. Varsity Media will broadcast your lacrosse games, which is great for rivalry games, homecoming, and, of course, Senior Day is right around the corner. And, oh, yeah, the playoffs. Email varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com or give us a call today, 917-470-0864. Mention this ad. You get 25% off of your sportscast. We've got a lot coming up on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The... Upcoming schedule this weekend and next weekend. We'll also see uh, Cold Spring Harbor and Syosset uh, as well next week. Should be a fun one. That one's 7.30 p.m. Tuesday. Uh, right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. But either way, Port Washington trying to extend this game, get a goal back, and try and force overtime against a very tough Cold Spring Harbor defense who just secured a ground ball. Yeah, we've, got, uh, we've learned a lot about this Cold Spring Harbor team. They are tough, physical, aggressive. I'm sure Coach Braun right now. I, I was a little surprised by the timeout because it looked like possession was definitely going to go their way, but he called it and looked before that ball got loose. But they did pick up the ground ball, and the timeout maybe just uh, we've got a minute and change left. Let's not do anything silly. Play a key, clean game and no more flags getting pulled out. And go home with the victory. It's going to be a nice bus ride home if they can pull this one off. So probably most impressed so far with the uh, the defensive side of the ball for Cold Spring Harbor. See if they can generate some offense one more time. With the long pole is Hunter Ulico. And gives it back to James Grigo who... I think for anybody's money, can be the player of the game in this one. As Alex Bauer. Now with a minute to go in regulation, Bauer and Port Washington's going to have to come out of the net, and an empty net at that as Harry Ainone leaves the pipes. And they're still putting pressure on him. It looks like the Seahawks are now aware of that empty net, and Aaron pass over the head of Bauer. And there's a turnover, so the extra man... On the defensive unit, helping Port Washington. Just going to have to really do a good job possessing the ball, making sure they don't give anything up. Across the midfield, here's Apat. Jacob Apat, half a minute to go in regulation. Port Washington has to shoot the ball. Here's Liam McCarville. Braunschweiger. Here's Steve Braunschweiger. Can't really step into it. Takes a tumble. Scooped out. And ahead, it's Jimmy Howell. 
With under 10 seconds to go, this should do it. Gunnar Anderson goes to X, and Cold Spring Harbor wins it. It's the least amount of goals that they scored in a game this season, but it does not matter as they've won five in a row with a 5-3 victory over Port Washington on the road. Yeah, eight goals total up on the board there, and again, uh, a good effort there by Port Washington. Probably wish they had a few more opportunities to figure out how to get closer to the crease and get some more shots off, but you got to tip your hat not only to that Seahawks defense, but the man between the pipes, Mr. Grigo, played a fantastic game. James Grigo with more than a dozen saves in the first half, a big reason why Cold Spring Harbor is in the winner's circle today. Andrew Mazzi with a couple of goals, as well as Brady McKean, Alex Bauer, and Roy Testa with the backbreaker. For Port Washington, it was Jacob Apat, Will Amodi, as well as Tommy McCarville. Those are your scorers here today. Cold Spring Harbor improves to 5-2. and two. Port Washington falls to 1-5 and five on the season, and that will do it for our coverage here today. For our executive producer, Ben Turchin, for Mike Verdi and Ben Turchin, uh, really putting the executive in the producing role here. Also camera operator and Mike Verdi, the immortal Mike Verdi, giving you the moving images. For technical director, Becca Kazax, and my partner, Rob Anderson, this is John Perez saying so long from Port Washington High School. This has been a presentation of Nassau County Lacrosse.